Did you know that the hook from Biggie's debut single, Party and BS, comes directly from the end of the last poet song, When the Revolution Comes? D, let's talk about it. It's on, yeah, D. Alone, I was never on my own, yeah, D. Had hip hop got me alone. Make history, put it in a song, you did. And it's so, you did. It's so, you did. Alone, I was never on my own, you did. Had hip hop got me alone, you did. Make history, put it in a song, you did. And it's so, you did. It's so, you did. You did. What up, world? It's your man Art back with another episode of You Dig. And in this episode, we're talking about the Black Arts Movement. And if you're like me, you may not even know what that movement's about, but it's April, National Poetry Month. So we're getting even deeper into hip hop today, man. So, of course, we're going to open it up talking about the Black Arts Movement. Then we're going to jump things over into an unsung legend segment with the last poets. Yeah, man. Then we're going to cap everything off with a discussion of some legendary queens in our segment, Ladies First. So if you don't know, this is a very, very important episode. Without further ado, let's get into it. You dig? Yeah. So in today's segment of Let's Rap, we're rapping about a piece of hip-hop history that's rarely been discussed. We're going to be talking about the impact of the Black Arts Movement. As the precursor to hip-hop after the Harlem Renaissance, this movement became the space for black artists and intellectuals. The black arts movement, often regarded as the artistic and cultural sister of the black power movement, was sparked by the assassination of Malcolm X in 1965. Famous playwright Amiri Baraka, then known as Leroy Jones, moved to Harlem and established the Black Arts Repertory Theater School, which was considered the birth of the black arts movement. In his seminal 1965 poem, Black Art, which quickly became the major poetic manifesto of the Black Arts literary movement, Jones stated, we want poems that kill. He was not simply speaking metaphorically. During that period, armed self-defense and slogans such as arm yourself or harm yourself established a social climate that promoted confrontation with the white power structure, especially the police, i.e. terms like off the pigs. The goal of the Black Arts Movement was to reveal the experiences of African Americans without white society interpretation or influence. The struggles, strengths, and celebrations of African Americans through the creation of poetry, novels, music, visual art, and theater. Most of the art possessed a strong emphasis on Black economic and cultural autonomy that was akin to the teachings of the Black Power Movement and the Black Liberation Struggle. Like members of the Harlem Renaissance before them, black arts writers crafted a black voice that drew on African-American vernacular, songs, and even sermons. The work was essentially experimental, incorporating jazz and the blues. African folklore was also a central muse or theme throughout the black arts movement. The literature addressed issues such as socio-political awareness, interracial tension, and the relevance of African history and culture to black people in the United States. The black arts movement was politically militant, with the goal to create art that will fight for black people's liberation with as much intensity as Malcolm X and the enraged masses that took to the streets. The movement drew on chants, slogans, and the African ritual of call and response. In addition to the principles that will be incorporated by rappers, these are characteristics of the movement that will become key elements of hip-hop. The black arts movement quickly spread from the northeast to the south and the west coast. Literary groups such as Umbra Workshop of Manhattan and Third World Press of Chicago were established at this time. These black-owned publishing companies served as the source of radical and progressive literature that was distributed across the United States. Many notable figures were a part of the black arts movement, with most of them having a direct impact on hip-hop, specifically hip-hop's greatest rappers. People such as the late, great Maya Angelou, who was quoted on so many songs, featured on multiple hip-hop albums, and considered by some to be the godmother of hip-hop. The prolific writers James Baldwin and Nikki Giovanni came out of this movement, poets such as Gwendolyn Brooks and Sonia Sanchez. Milana Karinga, the founder of Kwanzaa, was a key figure in the movement, most notably inspiring Leroy Jones, eventually in Miri Baraka, to adopt an African name. The works of these people and many more out of the movement influenced the greatest minds in hip-hop to date. But one figure in particular that must be singled out is the last poets. Not only did this group influence the minds of future hip-hop artists, 
but their entire style is hip hop. The last poets are like the grandfathers of hip hop, and today they'll be the subject of our unsung legend segment. Thank you to all the great minds of the black arts movement. Your leadership, your courage is forever appreciated. Yes, indeed. The ultimate social commentary, spitting rhymes over drums. The rhythm was not as consistent as that that would develop in hip hop, but this is the blueprint. But before we go any further, Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, man. Stay tapped in with this good hip hop content. I'm telling you, we strive to bring y'all the best. But today, we're examining the lives and career of the legendary, yes, unsung legends, true definition of unsung legends, the Last Poets. The original users of the name The Last Poets were a trio consisting of Abid and Oyewale, Jill and Kane, and David Nelson. But the group went through many iterations as we will discuss in this episode. The name is actually taken from a poem by South African revolutionary poet, Bro Willie, father of hip-hop artist Earl Sweatshirt. The composition of this group is fairly complex, so we'll open up our discussion talking about the group as a whole, then we get a little deeper into who they are individually. The last poets were formed on May 19th, 1968 in East Harlem. May 19th is Malcolm X's birthday. The original trio performed on the New York television program Soul in October 1968. This would be the only recorded performance of the original trio. David Nelson left the group to focus on ministry and was replaced by Felipe Luciano. Then Luciano would lead the group to help found the street organization Young Lords, and Jill and Kane would soon lead the group to focus on theater. One day in Harlem, a security guy they met on tour that they had invited to join the group popped up in Harlem looking for a beard. This former security guy is Umar Ben Hassan, who is now one of the most notable members of the group. The last poet's self-titled debut album is something like I had never heard before and haven't heard since. I mean, it's critical. It's also instructional. It's heavy. I mean, super heavy. It's no surprise that these brothers were not just artists. Like many other artists in the Black Arts Movement, they were actual revolutionaries. There was so much love expressed for Black people. Community love was abundant in Black music in the early 70s. I believe that true love is critical, and they were very critical of their people and the conditions in which they lived. As for the music, their influence on hip-hop is as clear as day. In addition to the general nature of rhythmic, melodic voices over drums, the repetition they use is the foundation for a hip-hop hook. Of course, there are other influences on hip-hop, James Brown, other soul artists, P-Funk, Disco, but the last poets are truly unsung legends in this hip-hop thing. I mean, their first album is classic. They did so much with just their voices and drums. I strongly encourage you to check this album. But let's take it a step back, though. Before the album was released, Abidin was forced to leave Harlem and move to North Carolina. Shortly after moving to North Carolina, he went to prison for robbing the Klan. Given the success of the last poet's debut album, Former members David Nelson, Jillian Kane, and Felipe Luciano reunited under the names The Original Last Poets. They released a documentary and album entitled Right On, released in 1971. With Abid still in prison, Jalaluddin and Umar, alongside the percussionists from the debut album Elijah, The Last Poets released their second album, This Is Madness, in 1971. The Original Last Poets released their second album, Black Spirits, Festival of New Black Poets in America in 1972. In 1973, Jalaluddin released his first solo project entitled Hustlers Convention under the name Lightning Rod. This album's influence on hip-hop is super evident. The slang he was using has been recycled in hip-hop for decades. The content and even its cadence at times is modern hip-hop to the core. The group's next album, At Last, in 1973, we see the departure of percussionist slash vocalist Nalaja and the addition of Suleiman Al Hadi. With the exception to a 1976 compilation album entitled Jazzetry, At Last would be the last album to include Umar until 1993. Jazzetry would also feature vocals from Abiyadin, who hadn't appeared on an album since their debut. After their 1977 release, Delights of the Garden, Jalaluddin and Suleiman Ohadi would record on and off with very little promotion, releasing six albums together until Suleiman's death in 1995. In 1993, Abiyadin and Umar reunited to release their first album as a duo entitled Holy Terror. They would release their second album, Time Has Come, in 1997. 
Jalaluddin would release the primetime rhyme of the last poets, Best of Volume 1 and 2, in 1999, featuring he and posthumous Suleiman Ohadi. After being at odds for decades, the last poets reunited in 2008. Abid and Ayuwale, David Nelson, Felipe Luciano, Jalaluddin Nuradin, and Umar Ben Hassan reconvened for a show in Paris and recorded a documentary entitled Made in America, stylized with three Ks. With the appearances on Common and Kanye's hit The Corner and popping up on a couple tracks off Nas's untitled album, The Last Poets finally released another album in 2018. This album, Understand What Black Is, is high level for show. The album featured only Abiyadin and Umar. In 2019, they released an album entitled Transcending Toxic Times, adding a third poet to the fold, Baba Don Baba Tunde. So that's the career of the group as a whole, but I really want to shine some light on the individuals of the group. Umar Ben Hassan was born in Akron, Ohio. He states that he was a street cat who ended up gravitating to black nationalism. He first met the last poets doing security at a black arts event at Antioch College. His encounter with one of the members began with him threatening the member's life, but ended up with the last poets inviting him to Harlem. After being kicked out of Akron for starting a riot at the Goodyear plant where he worked, Umar moved to Harlem to join the last poets. The story is that he pawned his sister's radio for $25 to buy a ticket and food to move to Harlem. Originally known for his voice and passion, Umar left the group in the mid-70s, stating that the demons of drug abuse drove him back into the streets. After leaving New York and moving in with his sister in Connecticut, Umar got clean and was inspired to get back into performing after his nephew was playing a Tribe Called Quest song and Umar heard them saying one of his poems over a beat without permission. Abidun Oyewale is originally from Cincinnati and came to New York at age three. Abidun stated that when Dr. King was killed after championing non-violence, he felt that the country was steeped with violence, so he had to keep a gun. Abidu stated that he felt like a fake just reciting lines about revolution and he felt he needed to take more action against the oppressor. Abidu was forced to leave Harlem after pressure from the police and a mutual decision amongst his counsel. After moving to Raleigh, North Carolina, in an attempt to raise money for the legal defense of two other revolutionaries, Abidu was arrested for robbing the Klan of $8,000 and sentenced to four years in prison. Abid and Oyewale were going to be a playwright and professor at Columbia University. Jalaluddin Mansour Nuradin was born in Brooklyn, Fort Greene to be exact. He grew up running in a street gang until he was locked up as a teen. He would be in prison until he was given early release to go into the army as a paratrooper. He would later be in prison by the army for refusing to salute the American flag. He did, however, receive an honorable discharge. Jalaluddin was the pillar of the group, appearing on basically all of the albums. When he passed in 2018, many publications labeled him the grandfather of rap. Jillian Kane, one of the founding members, is actually the father of Khalil Kane, known for playing Raheem and Juice. Baba Don Babatunde is the newest member of the group. He grew up listening to The Last Poets and is slightly younger than the other active members. The Last Poets are hip-hop history and definitely unsung legends. Make sure you do your research on their self-titled debut album and Jalaluddin's solo album, Hustlers Convention, so you can truly get the impact on who these people are. Straight legends. Uh, word up. In today's Ladies First segment, we're discussing some of the women who helped lead the Black Arts movement and ultimately helped form hip-hop. As you can see from today's episode, the Black Cards movement is essentially a parent of hip-hop, with no one giving more credit for her influence than the late great queen, Maya Angelou. A quick background on this extraordinary queen, Maya Angelou moved to New York in 1960 to concentrate on her writing career. She joined the Harlem Writers Guild, which was founded by John Henry Clark and others. She moved to Africa in 1961, settling in Accra in 1962. Maya Angelou and Malcolm X became good friends during Malcolm's visit to Accra in 1964. In 1965, she moved back to New York to assist Malcolm X in forming the Organization of Afro-American Unity. Malcolm was assassinated shortly after her return, creating the Black Arts Movement. Considering her role in the Black Arts Movement and beyond, she is considered by many to be the godmother of hip-hop. Q-Tip called her one of his biggest inspirations, saying that he tried to copy her voice when he started with the Tribe Called Quest. 
Q-Tip stated, I tried to copy Maya's fluent voice early on, but failed miserably. But because of her, I found my own. When Nicki Minaj faced opposition as an up-and-coming female rapper, she rhymed about it on a song called Still I Rise, the title of a track on her 2019 mixtape, Be Me Up, Scotty. On Tupac and the Outlaws' only collaboration album entitled Still I Rise, pop rap, I was born not to make it, but I did, the tribulations of a ghetto kid, Still I Rise. On the introduction to We Got It For Cheap, Clips rapper Malice raps about trying to hustle to escape the streets, Saying it's like trying to fly, but they clipping your wings. And that's exactly why the cage bird sings. On their debut album, The Roots compared themselves to Angelou over Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe, and Mark Twain. In 2011, she recited one of her poems on Common's song, The Dreamer. She later said she was surprised and disappointed by Common's use of the N-word on the track, but it didn't turn her off from such collaborations. When Kendrick Lamar needed to cast a mentor for himself on his instant classic concept album, Good Kid, Mad City, he cast Angelou. So at the end of the album, she leads Lamar and his struggling friends in a closing prayer, declaring the start of a new life. She also composed poems for the film Poetic Justice and appeared in a cameo role in the film. Icons such as Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock have all praised Angelou as the godmother of hip-hop. These are some of the statements rappers made after Angelou's passing in 2014. Smoke Dizzle, R. Peter Maya Angelou, one of the most important poets of our time forever inspired by her words. Ja Rule, R. Peter, one of the greatest voices of our generation, Maya Angelou. Lil Wayne Closer, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, Maya. Nas, momentarily took the air out of me hearing you passed over, then I smiled for you. Rest in glory, Maya Angelou, love. Swiss Beats, R. Peter, Maya Angelou, the great outcast. Rest in peace to the poet queen, Maya Angelou. Kanye West has referenced Angelou throughout his career. In the 2002 remix of Talib Kweli's Get By and on Hey Mama from 2005's Late Registration. He also cited her as an inspiration alongside other greats in a 2010 blog post written several months before he released My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Kanye states, We will follow in the same footsteps Maya Angelou, Gil Scott Heron, and Nina Simone. Their work improved with time. They documented what was happening in culture. That is our responsibility as the modern day artists and poets to accurately represent what is happening now. So when the power that be try to rewrite history, you can always look at our words and find truth and sincerity in a world of processed information. Angelou stated that she was optimistic about the future of poetry, saying that all I have to do is listen to hip hop or some of the rappers. As for other notable ladies from the black arts movement with a heavy impact on hip hop, in the 2015 documentary, Bad DDD, Sonia Sanchez, Tyler Kweli credits Sanchez for making it possible for hip hop to exist, stating she didn't just kick the doors down, she blew the roof off. Nikki Giovanni has publicly been a proponent of hip hop for decades, penning the children's book, Hip Hop Speaks to Children, a celebration of poetry with the beat in 2008. She even has a thug life tattoo. These ladies and many more laid the foundation for this art form we call hip hop. Pay homage, you did. Yeah, man. So that's a wrap city in the basement. Another dope episode. Hope y'all learned something, man. Got into that black arts movement. Honestly, I ain't even know much about that until I did the research here. So hopefully y'all learned something, man. Also talked about the last poets, the unsung legendary last poets. Definitely set the blueprint for all this we got here in hip-hop. And then, you know, we capped it all off talking about the queens of the movement, of the black arts movement. That's Maya Angelou, Nikki Giovanni, Sonia Sanchez, and so many more, man. But yeah, we're going to close things out recommending the dope track from The Last Poets, track called Ends of Scared of the Revolution. Yeah, man. <laughs> Check that out for sure, for sure. Y'all want to say tap in what we got going on, man? That rnd.com for all the merch, you know what I mean? Please leave a comment in that comment section. If y'all had any questions about this episode or any suggestions about future episodes, go ahead and leave that, man. I'll be in the comment section all the time. Also, subscribe if you ain't subscribed already. Share this with your folks so they can subscribe and everybody stay tapped in with this high-level hip-hop content. But yeah, man, thank y'all for tuning in. Until next time, you dick. You dick.